I'm going to give an, an overview of, of uh, the, the major source of the water that flows down into northern Sudan and, and Egypt, the, the, the Blue Nile, and, and a couple other tributaries uh, in the Ethiopian highlands, and uh, the interconnection with, uh, with power resources. So you can see from here that, that the Blue Nile for Egypt and northern Sudan is, is really uh, critical. 86% uh, of the water reaching the Aswan Dam in Egypt uh, in a, an average year originates in, in these uh, three Ethiopian sets of tributaries. And uh, a couple years ago, uh, the government of Ethiopia announced the, the uh, construction of a new dam which will likely become the, the largest dam in Africa. Uh, it will uh, impound about uh, uh, one year's wor worth of, of a flow of the Blue Nile River. Uh, they began construction in April of, of 2011, uh, scheduled for completion sometime in 2014, and uh, will have about twice the generating capacity of the Aswan High Dam. You can see there on, in the map the location. It, it's, I think, about 40 kilometers uh, into Ethiopia for, from the Sudanese border along the Blue Nile. So uh, it, it would be irresponsible for me to, to uh, say a lot about you know, what, what some of the positive aspects are of, of this Aswan, sorry, of, of this Renaissance Dam, uh, given that th there has been no environmental uh, and social impact assessment yet published, and uh, a panel of, of 10 experts is, is currently meeting to assess the impact of the construction of the dam on, on downstream riparians, uh, but, but that won't stop me altogether from making a few remarks. Um, first of all, th this dam uh, provides the infrastructure th that's needed to help for uh, Ethiopia with job creation, economic development and, and uh, diversification. It can also uh, be a source of reliable water for, for irrigation. Uh, it can as well uh, produce uh, a lot of electricity to, to meet the growing energy needs of Ethiopia's partners. Not, not all the electricity that'll be produced will be consumed in Ethiopia. They're, they're expecting about 4,000 megawatts of power uh, to be produced for uh, uh, regional partners over the next decade. Uh, and then there are a few technical advantages of, of this proposed dam. Uh, first of all, siting the dam in the Ethiopian highlands uh, will lead to less evaporative losses than if a comparable dam had, had been built uh, in, in Sudan or Egypt. Uh, second, it provides uh, flood control to, to protect uh, downstream settlements. Third, it'll retain silt and, and, and thereby increase the useful uh, lifetime of, of dams in Sudan and Egypt. Uh, however, there, there's a dark side and a reason that uh, Egypt and Sudan fear the construction of this dam, and that's that uh, you know, power generation may not be the only use of this water. It may be used for irrigation. Uh, it may be used for municipal consumption. And that would be water that would then not make it downstream to Sudan and Egypt. Now, about a year ago, and, and for the, the Bonn conference, we, we developed uh, some water and energy nexus maps. Uh, here I, I show, uh, we, we, we produce this map globally. I'm just showing you Africa. Um, what we have here is a water stress map. Uh, the areas in red show high stress, where, where demand for water is high relative to supply. The blue areas are the opposite end of the spectrum where water is relatively abundant. There you see the arrow uh, where the dam will be constructed. It, it's still in a relatively water abundant area. Um, and then you can see superimposed on there uh, dots reflecting uh, hydropower plants uh, today uh, in blue and then thermal power plants in red. We asked ourselves what, what percentage of today's power generating capacity in Africa is located in areas of water stress concern, and we estimate about 30% of those power plants are, are facing some degree of water stress. This shows the same map uh, with, with the hydropower plants, but looking into the future, what, uh, how, how much more stressed will 
uh, Africa become uh, water-wise uh, given projected changes in, in climate change and their, their impacts on, on water resources, growing population, and, uh, and, and, and economic growth. And we see here that sizable portion of, of the uh, uplands of, of the Nile River Basin generally are going to see um, water stress rates grow significantly. Uh, about that, that, that red area uh, says that, that, that water stress will grow about three to eight times worse between 2000 and 2025. And we therefore, we, we did the same mathematical analysis and, and expect almost 40% of power plant design capacity in Africa as a whole will see water stress grow two to eight times worse uh, between 20, 2000 and, and 2025. So, so some qu quick takeaway messages. Uh, public and, and private sector decision makers are, are gonna have to adapt quickly to a quickly evolving water reality. Dams and water consumption. We, we know that dams evaporate a lot of water but there's also a good chance, once you have a large body of water, that the dam will be used, that, that the impounded water will be used for things other than just generating electricity. And then this bring, brings me to the issue that we keep talking about, trade-offs. Unless we can uh, significantly increase our water use efficiency, uh, people, politicians, uh, private sector leaders are gonna have to make increasingly difficult trade-off decisions. Will we use the scarce water resources for food, for energy, for, for municipal use? Um, and so we see here, the, the hope is our science will inform politics. Uh, we're, we're talking with a number of uh, government entities, with, with our private sector members on, on how to use these types of maps to inform their decision making. Uh, I won't go into any of that, but uh, we can talk about it in the Q&A or, or lunch afterwards.